Hello and welcome to Not The GP Versus series where we are about to see real life races, content creators and other sporting celebrities go head to head in a winner takes all one lap battle. My name for my name is Hayden Gullis and I'll be your commentator and host for today and joining me in the virtual commentary box this time it is not an American, it is in fact a Scotsman in the very talented Ginger Andy. Hello Andy. Hello everyone, hello Hayden, I hope you're all as excited as I am for the action to get underway with a fresh format and fresh faces, it should make the racing as unpredictable as ever, be sure to strap yourselves in. It really is going to be very, very unpredictable indeed, unfortunately today's event is taking place because of the postponement of real life sport due to the ongoing situation involving coronavirus. Our thoughts and prayers go out to all those who are currently affected and to the health workers and public services who are doing such an amazing job in these difficult times. We can all play our part though, so please stay safe and stay indoors. We have already seen these real life racers take on the content creators and celebrities before Andy, but on previous occasions, there have been lots of drivers on track and lots of excuses being dished out all the time. This time, however, it is a 1v1, so we will surely find out who is the quickest. Absolutely, Hayden. There is absolutely no hiding places whatsoever. 1v1, together on the racetrack, knockout format. The pressure is going to be on the drivers. They have got to deliver in this 1v1. I'm really excited to see who can come out on top and handle that pressure best. It's going to be very exciting to see exactly that. The format for you guys, let me run through it. Uh, if you are new here, you would, you might have missed the Not the Bar and Not the Oz GP series. Those were races. This time out, we're going for something completely different. 1v1 head-to-head -head winner takes all. So it's going to be one race between two drivers, uh, the one lap, and whoever gets through, gets through. You know, it's all on the line, Andy. The next ones uh, in the quarterfinal is going to be the same. The semifinals and finals will be a best of three races. So there is a little bit of chance. You know, if you do make a mistake, you can come back into it. But there are going to be fixed setups, auto ERS, assists are allowed, damage is off. There will be some backroom stewards just in case there are a few little incidents going on. But that all sounds very exciting, doesn't it, Andy? Yeah, it is very, very exciting. And of course, the first track, we're in Brazil for the round of 16. And then we head to Italy in the quarters, Japan in the semis and Belgium in the final. So they're all exciting racetracks where you can have plenty of drama, pl plenty of side-by-side -side action. So, you know, they've, they've picked some great tracks, some great chances for some overtaking. So I think we're going to see a lot of dicing and diving. And, uh, you know, I think we're going to see a few do or die moves, especially on those <laughs> one lap races, Hayden, because, uh, you know, if you finish second, you're going home. You're out. Finish. Exactly. Exactly. It's all on the line. You know, if, you, if it, there's any time to send it, it's going to be in these races. Of course, it is going to be taking place uh, on the F1 2019 game. So thank you for Formula One for the permission of allowing us to do that. Not on the F1 2020 game. That is still in production. So if you're wondering why you are seeing 2019 cars on your screen, well, that is the reason why. But we have got some very exciting lineups ahead of us here today, haven't we, Andy? We've got some big names. We've got F1 drivers, two in fact, um, including Lando Norris and Nicholas Latifi. We also have some big YouTubers in the uh, in the form of Benjamin Daly, Tiamat Marduk, uh, Arava. But looking through that list of names, who's your money on, Andy, for this competition? Oh, it's going to be it's going to be tough to call uh, very early for that. But I, I would say, you know. The F1 drivers, I'd say like the likes of Lando Norris, he's going to be a, a strong contender. You know, we know that Benjamin Daly as well, he plays the game a lot. He's quite quick, he's yeah. consistent. He, so in fact, I'd is, say those so sorry. <laughs> he in fact is going Go up against uh, David Schumacher uh, in the first round of these races, which will be kicking off very shortly. It's going to be uh, very quick races, in fact. Here you go, here's the, here's the lineup, here's the brackets of how the drivers can make it through to be a winner. You know, you've got Schumacher versus Daly on the left, kicking us off, followed by Archie Hamilton versus Chris Lake. Arava is going to be up next, up against Ian Poulter. Uh, Artem Markalov will be taking on Nicholas Latifi then. Then you've got Lando Norris, um, uh, Fenestras, he'll be up against, those two will be up against each other. Willini uh, versus Chadwick, Gutierrez versus Courtois, and uh, Peach Meat, Jay from Peach Meat taking on Van Dorn. Of course, uh, we will introduce each of these different characters as this uh, competition goes on. We'll tell you exactly who they are and where they have come from. But uh, let's head over to Brazil. Let's have a look at the, uh, at the track that we will be heading on to first, Andy. And do you want to talk about this? 
Yeah, well, it is an extremely exciting track. Plenty of opportunities to overtake down into De Ciro de Lago, into the Senna S at the start, if you can get a good getaway, and then the long run through turn 13 and 14 and up to the line. A real opportunity there in the drag race. There's no DRS, of course, on the opening lap. There only has one lap, so it's going to be interesting to see if the driver behind can get in the slipstream and try and pull alongside. We could see some side-by-side -side action across the line, perhaps even a photo finish. So, yeah, a great track to get us started on. You love having any opportunity to say those corner names, don't you? A little bit of, little bit of pride in yourself again, <laughs> them right. But we're going to kick off with the first race today. It is going to be Benjamin Daly, TMF Mardu, a F1 YouTuber versus David Schumacher. And it looks like Schumacher has got the lead for the time being, going through turn one and turn two. And then you've got the long run down in towards turn four. So Benjamin Daly, TMF Mardu, is going to be right on the back of David Schumacher going down in towards turn four. He's having a look around the outside. This is, of course, an F1 YouTuber. Plays this game daily. Uh, you know, pardon the pun, his name is Benjamin Daly, but he is playing it daily, and he has got 400,000 YouTube subscribers. He's going up against David Schumacher as they go side by side into the turn five, into towards turn six. Still wheel to wheel between the two, but this is fantastic racing as Schumacher goes a little bit deep on the brakes. Team Ed Mardu comes through, but there is still a chance for Schumacher to get him back on the run down towards the line. Of course, David Schumacher is the nephew of Michael Schumacher, son of Ralph Schumacher, and will hopefully be competing in F3 this year, but he has a lot of work left to do. The gap is five tenths of a second. No DRS is activated, and if you do not win this round, you will not progress to the quarterfinals. TMF Marduk holding it down for the time being. David Schumacher, is he in that slipstream? Is he in that toe? I don't think it's gonna be enough, and it looks like TMF Marduk is gonna take the first race win of this evening, Andy. That was quite a nice battle between the two of them. It was great, and that's that's uh, seeing that the, the format is working brilliantly, exactly as we'd like. Great racing between the two, especially in the first and second sectors. And then Ben got the job done up through turn five and six. Schumacher went that little bit wide, locked up, and then it was over from there. He just couldn't claw it back. And in the end, Benjamin Daly goes through, and Schumacher's out already. And that's, that's it. The pressure, one error, one lockup, goes wide, and it's game over. And he just was unable to claw that back. It really is. And, you know, we've not really got much time to talk about because we're going straight into our next battle. Archie Hamilton, he is a racing driver. He is also a content creator as well. And he will be up against Chris Lake, who, if you don't know, is an electronic music producer and DJ. So, you know, he's a big name in the music scene, but some of you may not be familiar with him. And we're not really too familiar with how these two are going to compete on the F1 2019 game. We saw Archie Hamilton last time around in the Pro Series. But Chris Lake, we're not too sure. So it looks like they're going to get started, Andy. Yeah, there we go. Off the grid they go. Archie Hamilton flies off the line. Chris Lake doesn't get away well at all. And the Mercedes driver will lead down into the centre. Yes, and Chris Lake has gone off already. And I think that might be that already as Archie Hamilton makes his way through the Senate S and down through turn three and surely now it's just a case of keeping it on the island and he should have this one in the bag. Chris Lake getting it all wrong into that first corner and Archie Hamilton just has got to take it easy, bring it home and uh, he should be safe and through into the quarterfinals where of course he would meet Benjamin Daly but it's not there yet, he needs to keep it on the island as he makes his way up the hill through turn five and turn six and then into the tight twisty section where we saw Schumacher lock up uh, in the previous heat. So Archie Hamilton just taking it easy, certainly a lot slower pace this one compared to the last race and not as much drama as he now makes his way up through Pico de Pato and down the hill towards the final part of the lap. Chris Lake, he'll be ruining that error, didn't get away, away well off the line and immediately tried to make up for lost time ran wide off the track onto the grass and it was all over from then on so here comes Archie Hamilton through Jean so up the hill and up towards the line and he will make his way through into the quarterfinals up to the line comes the Mercedes and that one was easy enough Chris Lake interestingly reeling him in towards the end of that there so Hayden a case of what might have been for Chris could have been what might have been for Chris. Um, I don't know whether that was Archie Hamilton, you know, just taking it cautiously at the end there. But well done to Archie Hamilton. We have our first quarter final battle. It's going to be TMF Marduk versus Archie Hamilton. Two YouTube content creators, although Archie Hamilton is also a driver. Our next matchup for today is going to be 
Arava, and he will be taking on Ian Poulter. Arava, if you don't know who he is, he is another F1 YouTube content creators with around three, or just over 300,000 um, subscribers, in fact. And Ian Poulter is a pro golfer. Ian Poulter has quite a lot of, uh, quite a lot of wins to his name. You know, six-time Ryder Cup winner, uh, 17 professional golf wins. So um, very different abilities between the two of these. You can see Arava just sort of getting ready uh, on your screens at the moment. If you guys want to get involved with today's um, today's show, you can do so by using the hashtag on Twitter, Veloce Virus. So don't forget to send us your tweets using hashtag Veloce Virus, and we'll read out a few of yours as the show goes on. But Arava and Ian Poulter just sort of getting ready at the moment, getting the lobby, um, getting the lobby started. Who is your money on for this one, Andy? Well, I think this is going to be quite interesting. I think Arava starts the favourite, obviously. Uh, he's played the game a lot. But Ian, you never know. He, he, he's, he's put a lot of practice in in the last few weeks. He'll be determined to go out there and put on a good show. So I'm interested to see what he can do. He's got a great setup as well. I've seen his setup. It looks fantastic. <laughs> yeah. So uh, looking to see how Ian gets on. Uh, gets on. But he, of course, he's a he's an expert driver himself. Although it's with a golf ball. He really ball. is. The, the lights are coming on now. Here we go. Five red lights between the two of them. Ian versus Arava. Who's going to come out on top? It looks like Arava has got the better start. He's in the Ferrari with Ian Poulter, the golfer in the Mercedes. Arava's got the job done at the moment down towards turn one. Ian Poulter not doing a Chris Lake, but he has lost the back end out of turn one there. And that looks like it could be an easy victory for Arava in round three of the round of 16 Ooh. at the moment. Arava, though, he just has to keep it clean. Ian Poulter could catch up if Arava makes the same sort of mistake. You've got to think for Arava, though, um, he would rarely would make a mistake like that because he is, of course, uh, an F1 content creator, plays this game quite a lot, is used to the physics and the driving style that you need to get one of these cars around this track quickly. Ian Poulter, though, will be looking to try and just keep it clean. You know, just try and make sure that he doesn't make any mistakes and hope and bet on a mistake from Arava. Of course, oh, look, there he goes. Ian Poulter, yeah. unfortunately, makes another mistake. That's a very, very unfortunate for him. It looks like it's going to be an easy victory for Arava at the moment. Of course, if you are enjoying what you are seeing at the moment, we've got plenty of races to come uh, throughout the rest of the night. Don't forget to check out the Veloce Esports YouTube channel after this because we have a lot of F1 content on there, uh, including lots more races like this one. Arava takes the win, though. He is round. He is through to the quarterfinals, and there we go. An easy victory for uh, Arava. And unfortunate, though, for Ian Poulter there to uh, just not keep it clean, isn't it, Andy? Yeah, Ian Poulter in the rough at the first and at the sixth. Uh, didn't go well <laughs> at all for him there. Off he went into the grass. And uh, an easy win for Arava. Oh, I've been waiting for so long. <laughs> so, so long. But yeah, uh, Arava, he'll be pleased to be through. He'll be relieved to see Ian in the wars immediately off the line. And, you know, Ian will be kicking himself. I'm sure he's put a lot of work into it. We've seen him, as I've said before, already on the sim practicing. So it's a sore win for him. But look at the next one coming up. Artem Markov mm. against Nicholas Latifi. That could be a tight one, Hayden. It could be a tight one. Artem Markov being an F2 racer for many years. And uh, Nicholas Latifi uh, graduating into Formula 1 for this season. Uh, hopefully looking to get a drive in 2020 if the season does continue. But it'll be very interesting to see who does come out on top of these two because, of course, they have raced against each other in F2. We don't really know the pace of Artem Markov because we haven't seen him in the likes of Not The Bar GP before. But we do know that Nicholas Latifi is quick. Yeah, Nicholas Latifi, he's looked really strong. He's probably, would it be fair to say, almost the best of the rest from the F1 drivers? He's certainly been really strong. And uh, yeah, as you say, unknown quantity in Markelov, but we'll find out just how strong he is as the five red lights go on. And we are racing in the third heat, the fourth heat, sorry. And away we go, Artem Markelov and Latifi. Latifi looks like he's got the run and got the lead into the first corner. Can Markelov fight back as they swoop down through the Senate S and on to turn three. Markelov in the slipstream in that Mercedes. Needs to get tucked right up behind Latifi. The Canadian goes defensive to the inside as they reach Decido de Lago. Markelov has a little look up the inside, but he's unable to go through. Yeah. But Latifi goes very, very wide. And now as they go up towards turn five and six, Markelov is now right behind him. Through there they go. Latifi still holding on. Markelov a little bit wide through there. And Latifi gains a bit of time. The pressure off. And neither of them make the mistake we've oh. seen. Oh, spoke too soon. Commentator's curse. Round goes Markelov into a spin. And that should hand Latifi a place in the quarterfinal, Hayden. Big spin there. 
It is unfortunate there for Artem Markolov to have that spin. You know, he was putting the pressure on Nicholas Latifi and he could have had a nice run out of this corner all the way down towards the start finish line to possibly challenge him at the line for the race victory. But unfortunately, it is going to go to Nicholas Latifi unless somehow he messes up onto the start finish line. He doesn't, he keeps it clean. And Nicholas Latifi is our fourth driver through to the quarterfinals. He will take on Arava in the quarterfinals. So we've got a very interesting quarterfinals ahead of us. You know, we've got uh, Benjamin Daly, team at Marduk. He's going to be going up against Archie Hamilton. He had a good race against um, uh, David Schumacher. Uh, Archie Hamilton had a sort of easier one against Chris Lake, but you never know what could happen between the two of those. Yeah, yeah, it's going to be really exciting to see. Uh, obviously, the, the first race was the, uh, the one that was really caught the eye out of the four there, the one that went all the way to the line. But uh, yeah, some a few, a few interesting quarterfinals in there, and I'm excited to see who can come out on top here. And it's going to be really exciting, and it's going to get tighter and tighter. Hopefully, we'll have less of these little slides, little errors. Obviously, the pressure's on; it's understandable as, as you can see. But you know, hopefully, it gets even tighter, a bit like that first race we've already seen. It probably will as the races go on. Let's talk, though, about the round of 16 races that we have still left to go. Lando Norris will take on his old roommate of Sasha Fenestras. That is going to be a very exciting one. Then we've got Willany, the uh, YouTube content creator, 3 million YouTube subscribers, taking on Jamie Chadwick, the W Series champion. And, of course, um, the Williams F1 uh, dr development driver. There you can see the brackets of the drivers who have progressed so far. Esteban Gutierrez taking on Thibaut Courtois. That's going to be an interesting one. x Form 1 driver versus the Real Madrid number one goalkeeper. It's always weird saying Thibaut Courtois in an F1 race. It's never going to get uh, feel normal saying that. Then finally, we will end the round of 16 with Jay from Peachmeat taking on Stoffel van Dorn, which is going to be the exciting one out of those four races, Andy. I'm looking forward to Courtois Gutierrez. I really am looking forward to that one. They've been quite similar. I think they've been sharing the racetrack a few times, actually, in, in the races we've had so far. So that one I'm excited for. Uh, I really think that one could be tight. Oh, look, there's uh, Lando Norris with the... Uh, Aldo Norris, his, uh, there he is. <laughs> yeah, his, his, his haircut. I mean, I heard it was uh, to, him, to give him less drag down the streets. Is that correct? Possibly. It might help him up against <laughs> Sasha Fenestras. You know, if he is behind going out to that final corner on the long run down to the start finish straight, it might help him out. It might help him get that victory. You know, uh, us boys, uh, we've got two different hairstyles during this quarantine period. You either go for the buzz cut like Lando's gone or you've got to try and grow it out. Andy, which one are you going for at the moment? Buzz cut or are you oh, growing I'm... it out? Oh, I'll be growing it out. I'll definitely be growing it out, Hayden. I'm not going for the egghead approach. <laughs> <laughs> We've got a couple of tweets coming in from uh, uh, Mooneeb. Uh, you guys are killing it on the commentary at Veloce, hashtag uh, Veloce Versus. And of course, if you guys want to get in touch, use the hashtag Veloce Versus on Twitter and we will read out your tweets and I will butcher the pronunciation of your names as well. So if you want to see that, send in your tweets. Uh, but Lando Norris, Sasha Fenestras is going to be up next. We're just waiting for it to get underway. Uh, a few uh, issues with the lobbies at the moment but we should be underway very shortly as I'm um, being told that the games are being launched uh, right now so Lando Norris versus Sasha Fenestras should be underway very soon but this is going to be an interesting one both are very quick and they were quick last time around in the pro series and were also quick uh, when we did the not the GP series as it looks like uh, we could be getting underway now maybe not maybe got a little bit longer to wait but who's your money on out of these two Andy quickly go too hard. Too tough to say. In a word, in a word Lando. I'm, I'm putting my money on Lando as well. He showed good speed uh, in not the Oz GP. And here we go in Brazil. It's Lando Norris in the bright orange McLaren up against Sasha Fenestras in the silver Mercedes. And it looks like Sasha might have got the better start. They're side by side as they go down in towards turn one. But Lando gets the inside through turn one. Sasha having to hold on, but he gets the inside line through turn two. Still wheel to wheel. What a battle between the two of them in the opening couple of corners. And now Sasha Fenestras is going to be following Lando all the way down in towards turn four. Lando goes defensive. Sasha has to go the long way around. He can't do it so far. And Lando holding position, loses the back end ever so slightly, but just about holds on ahead of Sasha Fenestras, who now goes around the outside. Lando, though, breaking earlier and actually giving the position to Sasha, who now takes the lead over the orange McLaren, but breaks very deep into the next corner. It is very tight between the two of those two of these. Lando giving Sasha a little love lap as they go that corner there. Now Lando trying to maximise his exit off this corner. Try and line up Sasha Fenestras all the way down 
towards the start finish rate. Here goes Lando Norris. He needs a good break. He goes up the inside. A late move from Lando Norris. It looks like he's got the job done. Sasha Fenestra is getting hung out to dry. And he's off the track. And it looks like Lando Norris is going to take the race win and move himself into the quarterfinals. I'm not too sure about that move, whether it was controversial or not. It looked like he had got the job done. Maybe Sasha just dropped it on the exit. We'll have to maybe get the race stewards involved. But a cracking battle, nonetheless, between the two of those, Andy. That was absolutely epic. Uh, all the way through the lap, through the Senate S, he's side by side. They showed great respect between them, each other. And then, absolutely sensational <laughs> move from Sasha around the outside through five and six. Lando had to back out. He didn't see it coming. And, you know, I feel for Sasha because that, that alone deserved to go through to the next round. And so unfortunate. And then Lando, as we expected, we said it at the top of the show, Hayden, it's do or die. You have to go for it. If he doesn't make that move there and then, he is out. And... Uh, yeah, he made the move, and by the looks of it, just about borderline okay from Lando. But I suppose that's one for the Stuarts, as you said, Hayden. You're giving it the okay, and then we're giving it the okay. If you're happy with it, we're happy with it. Up next is going to be Will and e, the YouTube content creators. Three million subscribers to his name, and he will be taking on the W Series champion, Jamie Chadwick, who is also a Williams F1 development driver. So uh, this is going to be a very interesting one. We haven't seen how well Jamie does uh, on the F1 2019 game. We have seen uh, Will and E before in not the Oz and not the Bar GP. So it'd be interesting to see how those two go. Um, Jamie Chadwick, what do you think? How do you think she's going to do? Uh, I, 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 I'm, I'm back enough to win this one. I think she'll uh, come out on top here. Uh, well, and he, he's showing some decent pace, but uh, it's an unknown quantity, but we're going to have to wait and see as the five red lights come on as Will and he leads them off the line on the run down of the turn one. And Jamie, whoa, the back end sliding like crazy there. As they make their way into the first corner. Will and he gets it through the first corner and is in control as things stand. So he's kept it tidy. Jamie, not so, so far as they make their way through, uh, cover the salt, and down the retroposta towards uh, De Ciro de Lago. And it looks like Willany has got this one so far, one and a half seconds between them. And as long as Willany keeps it tidy, he should have this one in the bag and should make his way through into the quarterfinals then. So up through five and six they go into the middle part of the lap. Can Jamie try and claw some of that time back? Locking up, losing the rear there. In desperation, trying to catch Will and E. I tell you what, she's not lost too much time at all, as she really has to wrestle that Williams car. So one and a half seconds between them, and it looks like Will and E keeping it clean and tidy Aww. is going to get the job done. Jamie Chadwick just a little bit too impatient on the throttle, and Will and E, who's just kept things under control, nice and clean, nice and tidy, is surely going to come home and earn a place in the quarterfinals. Down the hill comes that. Uh, bright orange McLaren and up towards the line. Well, and he takes his place in the quarterfinals. Probably our uh, our first surprise win of the night, Andy. Will and he, no one really expected that. But look at him moving into the quarterfinals. And he is going to be taking on Lando Norris, which is going to be a very exciting battle between the two of those. Unfortunate for Jamie Chadwick there, just losing the back end uh, quite a few times. I suppose when you are in second place and you know it is do or die, uh, you know everything is on the limit. And unfortunately for her, she just pushed it a little bit too far. But we'll talk about that in a bit. Up next is going to be the one that you oh. are in in fact, looking forward to the most. Thibaut, Thibaut Courtois versus Esteban Gutierrez. These two are very closely matched. We have seen it before in F1 2019 in not the Oz GP. So they're very closely matched. Of course, Thibaut Courtois is in fact an F, uh, is in fact yeah. an F1 goalkeeper. He's a real Madrid goalkeeper. <laughs> uh, the number one, um, two Premier League titles to his name, third in the 2018 World Cup. And then you've got Esteban Gutierrez, who has uh, like 56 uh, I think it's 56, yeah, 59, sorry, F1 race stars. So he has a lot of experiences, experience to his name. But Thibaut Courtois yeah. is quick. We have seen that. Yeah, he is very quick. And if there's anyone that knows anything about a knockout tournament, it's him. Champions League, World very Cup, true. that's yeah. it. <laughs> he knows all about knockout. He knows all about the pressure. I want to know if he races with his goalie gloves on. That's what I want to know. If he's at home between the sticks, does he wear his goalie gloves and feel at home uh, behind the wheel? I want to know. I want to know. <laughs> I think that'd be awesome if he does. But I think he'd have a few troubles reaching for some of the buttons, Hayden, if he had his goalie gloves on. <laughs> true, true. We've had a tweet come in from Jack. Uh, hashtag blockchain versus get in there, Will, my son. We've got a lot of Will and E fans, so it's no surprise that that is a favourite result amongst some of you guys watching at home. Don't forget, you can get involved by using the hashtag for Loche versus. We want to know what you think about tonight's proceedings. So get
Get in touch on Twitter using the hashtag for Loche Versus. We shouldn't be too long now until we get underway between Thibaut Courtois and Esteban Gutierrez. Uh, the session is apparently just loading now, so we should be underway very, very soon. Thibaut Courtois, the Real Madrid number one goalkeeper <laughs> versus an ex-Formula One driver. This is insane, but this is what it's all about. Here we go. The five lights are on and we are underway here in Brazil. Esteban Gutierrez in the silver Mercedes with Thibaut Courtois in the bright orange McLaren. Esteban gets the much better start on the run down in towards turn one, but Thibaut Courtois is hot on his heels. Through turn three, they go right on the back now of Esteban Gutierrez. He's dropped off a little bit, but he will get back in that slipstream and follow him all the way down in towards turn four. He is gaining massively on Esteban Gutierrez. Very late on the brakes compared to the Mercedes driver. Uh, and unfortunately for uh, Thibaut Courtois, just can't quite make the move. He's not close enough yet, but there is still a long way left to go in this lap. The gap between the two of them, two tenths of a second. The Real Madrid a number one goalkeeper touches with Esteban Gutierrez. He just about manages to hold on. Gutierrez breaking a little bit earlier for Courtois liking, but it was a great save, which you always, which you usually see from of course a Real Madrid goalkeeper. As Thibaut Courtois gets it on the grass, but he couldn't save that one. It's oh gone in the God. top corner, and Thibaut Courtois looks to have lost this matchup against Esteban Gutierrez, unfortunately as Gutierrez only has to try and make it home, Andy, and it should be fairly easy for him to progress into the quarterfinals. It was such a close battle, but unfortunately it just got away from Thibaut, didn't it? Yeah, it did. He saved the initial shot, but he couldn't save the rebound, and Esteban Gutierrez goes through to the next round. But once again, Hayden, it's that pressure of being behind. You overdrive. You just want to give that little bit more, that extra percentage, but it's over the 100% mark and drivers are making mistakes. We've seen it several times now, and Esteban Gutierrez keeps it clean, got his nose into turn one first, and saw it through and makes his way into the quarters. Exactly. I mean, it is all about keeping it clean. It's a bit of, a, you know, it's just getting the right balance between being aggressive, but also being patient and getting your move done at the right time. Our next matchup is going to be Jay from the channel Peach Me. If you don't know what Peach Me is, it is a German YouTube channel. Uh, they have uh, just over 2 million YouTube subscribers, and he is one of the presenters on that channel. And he is going up against Stoffel van Dorn, who is the Mercedes Benz EQ. Formula E driver. So this is going to be a nice matchup. We don't know the potential of Jay. So he could be quick and he could give Stoffel a real run for his money, couldn't he, Andy? Yeah, we don't know. It's going to be totally unknown to us as uh, we get loaded up and we're racing in Australia, yeah, it well, seems. Isn't it weird? <laughs> so we're racing in Australia. Oh, okay, so Stoffel van Dorn then leads them down into the first corner. He's ahead of Jay and Jay's going for it down the inside. Oh, there was almost oh. contact. There might have actually been contact. I'm not too sure. Jay looks to have gone spinning and Stoffel van Dorn should be able to, and it looks like we're going to... Okay, I think we're going to go to another one because we were on the wrong track, unfortunately. So a few technical <laughs> difficulties in the background. Uh, someone forgetting to select the right track. But nevertheless, uh, we get a little. We got a little bit of a taster there of what's to come. You know, Stoffel van Dorn a little bit quicker off the start, but it's interesting to know that Jay will put his nose in there if an opportunity arises. So it's, that is going to make this very exciting, isn't it? Yeah, he'll be, I think Jay will be hoping he starts from pole next time and rather than second <laughs> to try and get his nose ahead into that first corner because that was desperate immediately. Again, the pressure. You just want to be the first car into that corner because Australia, because if he felt he was going to be racing at Australia there, it's not a track with many overtaking opportunities. So I can understand why he went for that right away. Whereas at Brazil, as we've mentioned, you know, you can, you can bide your time. You can make that move right up to the end of the race. So I'm looking forward to seeing how it pans out. We've had another one of your tweets come in. This time it's from Niall Rudd. Uh, hashtag Vloche versus watching these amazing uh, Lando's overtake last corner. So it was a pretty great overtake from Lando Norris. Thank you for getting in touch. And don't forget, you can also get in touch at home by using the hashtag Veloce versus. So get in touch. We'll read out your tweets and they will come up on the big screen. But uh, yeah, it's going to be an interesting matchup between the two of these. We we don't really know the rest of the potential from Jay uh, Peach Street, but... I am excited to see how these two go uh, across the rest of... We will be going to Brazil. Don't you worry. We'll, we'll, we will be going to Brazil. We won't be racing out Australia. We can see Brazil once again. And then we can hopefully see someone go side by side down that long straight, Andy. Yep, uh, hopefully we can see that because we're waiting on it. We're desperate for it. Just like Gasly against uh, 
Hamilton was it? Uh, that was that's exactly what we're looking for. Something like that, right up to the line. Some real drama, and hopefully we will get it. We are now in Brazil. We've flew across from uh, Melbourne, and it's time to go <laughs> racing. <laughs> yeah, Stoffel versus Jay. The five red lights go out, and it is Jay that crucially leads them off the line. So the pressure straight away on the Formula E man and former Formula One driver. So. Jay then, the unknown quantity in this race. Oh, he's oh. gone a little bit wide and Stoffel slingshots through the centre S and charges through up into the lead between the two already. Look at Stoffel weaving from left to right, trying to break <laughs> that toe. And at the end of that first sector, he is ahead of Jay and Jay almost running into the back of the Mercedes there. He really is a charging bull, really desperate to get through, but unable to do it. And Stoffel now has a solid, not comfortable, six second gap. Uh, uh, six seconds, six tenths gap as they go through turn six. So Jay, under pressure, will he make mistakes? Will he overdrive it? Not so, so far. He's keeping all of his eggs in the one basket, potentially for that final chance over the start finish line. But it looks like Stoffel is extending the gap further. Saying that, I think he was a little bit wide there coming out of Pico de Pato, but I think he should have this one in the bag. Around a second between them at the foot of the hill. And now Stoffel van Dorn should be home and dry. He should be safe as he makes his way, swooping down the hill up to the line. And Stoffel van Dorn joins the rest in the quarterfinals in the Veloci Versus. There we go then. Stoffel van Dorn is our final quarter finalist. What an exciting lineup we have got. Uh, ahead of ourselves in this Veloce, not the GP versus series. We've got Stoffel van Don in the quarter quarterfinals. I just want to say a big thank you to everybody who has taken part in the round of 16 and unfortunately has not progressed into the quarterfinals. You've all put on a great show and uh, you should all be proud of yourselves. But we have got our quarter finalists. If hopefully we can get the screen uh, up to show us the brackets, but it is going to be Tiamat Marduk versus Archie Hamilton to kick us off. Then you've got Arava versus Nicholas Latifi. That is going to be an exciting one. Progressing over to the other side of the bracket, you have Lando Norris versus Willany. Looks like that could be an easy Norris win, but Willany is already beating a W Series champion. Can he go on to beat an F1 driver? That is going to be exciting. And then finally, we will have Stoffel van Dorn take on his Mercedes teammate. Uh, of course, they're both uh, F1 test drivers uh, in the last quarterfinal Vespan Gutierrez. Reading another tweet from Nathan Schwartz. This, these are amazing. Waiting for that team at Marduk versus Lando Norris battle in the finals. Oh, looks like we've already got Ooh. a prediction. Our first prediction of the night for the final. Lando Norris versus Team at Marduk. Is that what you think for the finals, guys? Let us know uh, by tweeting us using the hashtag Veloce versus Andy, quarterfinals. Which is your favourite lineup coming up? There's a few crackers in here. I'm liking uh, Arava versus Latifi. I think that is going to be fun. And I'd also say that final quarter, if you want, if we could call it that, the quarter that had Courtois, Gutierrez, Jay and Van Dorn, I'd say that's the toughest quarter to get into the next round. And I'm really looking forward to see who comes out on top in that one. So that will be Van Dorn against Gutierrez. So yeah, that is going to be really exciting. They're the two I'm really excited for. Norris against um, Will and E as well. That'll be exciting. There's a lot of banter between those two. So I'm excited <laughs> to see how that one pans out. But yeah, I I'm loving the format. I think it's just given us a an extra bit of excitement. And yeah, these predictions coming in, I'm excited to see all of everyone's predictions. Get them in because, you know, I'm not putting a prediction in because it'd be a brave man to try and predict that. But uh, yeah, really enjoying <laughs> it so far. It is very enjoyable. We've had some cracking races so far. I think the highlight for me from the round of 16 has got to be that David Schumacher versus Tiamat Mardu yeah. battle. It was so good at the start. Uh, any other highlights from you from the round of 16? Oh, without doubt, Sasha's uh, move through turn five and six on Lando. Uh, you know, as I said already, I feel from that he missed out because it was a really good move. It was fantastic. And uh, yeah, I'd say that was the move of the round so uh, move of the tournament so far. I think that's fair to say. Again, we're interested to hear what you guys think. Hashtag Veloce versus what's been your favourite move of the tournament so far. But you know, we move into the quarterfinals now and we've got a different racetrack heading. So it's all up in there. We're now heading to Monza, the Speed Cathedral. And it's going to be really exciting. Yes, Monza is a completely different circuit. It's all about high speed. And I'm going to let you run through because you know your corner names better than I do. So give us a rundown of Italy. Well, we've got the magnificent Curva Grande. We're going to see some side-by-side -side action through there. The Lesmos at turns 6 and 7. The incredible Ascari Chicanes turns 8, 9 and 10. And of course, the magnificent Parabolica at the end of the lap. We might see some side-by-side -side action at the end. And there, Hayden, some desperate diving stuff. But up first, 
Tiamate Marduk against Archie Hamilton. What do you make of that one, Hayden? This is going to be an exciting one. We don't really know the full pace of Archie Hamilton. He went up against Chris Lake. I feel like Chris Lake, unfortunately, made that mistake early on, and that allowed Archie Hamilton to go a little bit easier uh, through the rest of the race and not really push himself because he had that gap. Here's a bracket for you once again uh, so you guys can see how everyone is progressing at the moment for the finals. You've got Team Ed Marduk versus Archie Hamilton, Arava versus Latifi, Lando Norris will take on the YouTube content creator of Will and E with Esteban Gutierrez and Stoffel Van dawn being our final race of these quarterfinals before we head into the semis of course which will be a best of three but let's not get ahead of ourselves let's talk about this one team at marduk versus archie hamilton of course benjamin daly team at marduk he is a youtube content creator for f1 um so he of course plays f1 quite a lot he has a lot of experience on this game archie hamilton is a real life racing driver so you definitely have that comparison here today between a youtube content creator and a real life driver are the skills mm. really that transferable yeah well it's going to be interesting to see this one Hayden, because I, I don't know if archie hamilton was holding his pace back, just making sure he didn't make an error. We're going to find out for real now because we saw, we saw Ben, his first race. Out of everyone so far, he was the one that really had to fight, really, really had to give it his all. If, uh, most of the other drivers have been able to be cautious. They've had a gap. So I'm interested to see if Archie has, has got that pace and he's going to show less caution because he's going to have to, to win. Well, it looks like we're going to find out straight away as the lights are coming on. It's Team Ed Marduk versus Archie Hamilton, and it's lights out, and we are off. Archie Hamilton in the red Ferrari with Team Ed Marduk in the bright silver Mercedes. Looks like Team Ed Marduk has got off to a fantastic start as they go down in towards turn one. Late on the brakes, Archie Hamilton taking a nice line through there. Can he keep it clean and try and get to the back of Team Ed Marduk? It looks like he's sort of run off into the distance with this one. 1.7 seconds, 1.92 seconds is the gap between these two as we run down into the second chicane through the curve of Grande. And uh, there we go as uh, Team Ed Marduk climbs over the curbs there. Not really losing too much time though, pulling out a massive gap over Archie Hamilton. It looks like it's going to be a commanding victory for Team Ed Marduk, but we're only halfway through the lap. He can easily make a mistake around here. Ascari is going to be a very difficult corner to get through and you can easily get your, uh, your, your lap invalidated if you cut the track a little bit too much. But it looks like Team Ed Marduk has got through there. Okay, he is on the run down now into the final corner and it looks <laughs> like he should take the victory here. Look at him weaving down the straight, really putting it in the face of Archie Hamilton. It's been a breeze for Team Ed Marduk to take the victory and move himself into the semi-final. Will it all come back to haunt him? No, it won't. It looks like, oh, he was baiting <laughs> us coming into the pits, but uh, there he goes, comes across the line, and it's a race win, an easy race win for Team Ed Marduk as he does some donuts to celebrate there, really collides with Archie Hamilton. But an easy victory there for Team Ed Marduk, and he is through to the semi-finals, Andy. Well, I don't think the Tifosi will like to see that kind of showboating <laughs> on home soil. Uh, the Ferrari well beaten there of Archie Hamilton, and it was true. Archie just didn't have that much pace. He got through that first round more so because Chris made the error, because we saw Chris was gaining on him in that race, and Ben, he just uh, romped that one. And, you know, is there, a, is there now a favourites tag beginning to develop for Team Ed Marduk? Perhaps there is. It could be. It could be. And we're just going to go straight into the next round, which is, of course, going to be another F1 YouTube content creator, Arava, with over 300,000 YouTube subscribers. He will be taking on the Formula 1 driver of Nicholas Latifi, and I'm going to hand over to you, Andy. Well, this is going to be a meaty one. The five red lights go out, and Arava doesn't get away well. Is it going to be another sore one for the Tifosi on home soil? Nicholas Latifi storms into the lead as they go down into that first chicane. Arava breaking very late. Again, the pressure telling you're so desperate to try and make up lost ground immediately. Latifi really tidy through that first chicane as they now make their way through Cover Grande. Arava tucked up in the slipstream behind the Williams. Is he going to have a look? Down into the second chicane. Latifi defends the inside. The Canadian, Arava, round the outside. He goes. Can he get it stopped? No, not quite. Able to sweep through. And Latifi holds on. And is that already game over? Arava losing time there. Eight times between them as they make their way through Lesmo number one and then Lesmo number two. Arava has got to throw the kitchen sink at the Ascari chicane. He's half a second behind. He's right in the slipstream. And he's going to have a real opportunity, perhaps, into the Parabolica. Does Latifi play it cautious through here? 
Does that Arif has got to go for it, and he does go for it. He flew through there. Look at the gap. Two and a half tenths. This could be the closest finish we've had so far. Matifi defending like crazy, moving to the right hand side. Arif into the parabolica with all the backing of the Tifosi, trying to go right round the outside of Nicholas Latifi. The Formula One driver looks though like he's got the better of it as they reach the line. Is it going to be a photo finish? Not quite. Nicholas Latifi holds on, and that was absolutely fantastic. Fantastic stuff, Aiden. That was amazing. What a battle between the two of them. I thought Arif had lost it once he went for that move down towards the second chicane. I thought it was all over, unfortunately, for Arif. But he clawed it back. Fantastic through the end section of the circuit. Clawed back Nicholas Latifi and put on a wonderful show for us. Unfortunately, he does not progress to the semi-finals. It is going to be Tiamet Marduk versus Nicholas Latifi, which is going to be a very exciting battle in the semi-finals. Both of those looking now to try and get into the final. But great battle around Italy and uh, just really showing us what we could expect from the rest of the drivers going into the rest of these rounds, Andy. Yeah, absolutely. That's a great advert. That's exactly what we want to see. And uh, yeah, I'm really looking forward to it. It's going to get tighter and tighter as the, the better drivers, the quicker drivers rise to the top. Things are just going to get closer and closer as we see a quick shot of Lando there as he gets ready for his race at Monza. He is just getting ready. He will be going up against the YouTube content creator of Willie Nee. Three million subscribers to his name, Lando Norris, an F1 driver. Who is going to come out on top? They're both in McLaren's, which is going to make it maybe a little bit difficult for us to sort of determine who is who. But we will do our best for you. Lando Norris gets off to a fantastic start and leads the way as Willie nee tries to duck and dart to get round him. They're going side by side to go down in towards turn one. Who's going to break late? It's Willie nee breaking later there The Lando Norris. He's up the inside on the exit of turn one. And two, and it looks like he's got the job done for the time being. Will and E holding the lead. Can we have another surprise victory from Will and E? Lando is going to have to throw everything now into the rest of this circuit as he tries to claw back Will and E and tries to get the job done. We saw a fantastic overtake from Lando Norris on Sasha Fenestras right at the end. And it looks like Lando is now right on the back of Will and E as they go down in towards Lesmo 1. Here he goes. Nice tidy line there from uh, Lando Norris. Now in towards Lesmo 2. And again, nice and tidy, but no real opportunity to go for an overtake just yet. He might be able to go for it, though, down into the Ascari chicane. Will and he doesn't defend the inside line. Lando now up the inside, Ooh. down in towards Ascari. They hold it side by side. Will has to go the long way round. Great driving between the two of them. Great respect between the two McLaren drivers. But Lando Norris gets the job done. Will there be a last-ditch attempt from Will and e to hold on to this competition? Lando Norris feeding the break of that slip -tree. Will and E's going to have to have a fantastic exit out of the Parabolica if he wants to get the job done. It doesn't look like it, though. Lando Norris is going to come down and cross the line and make his place in the semi-finals. Well done to Lando Norris there, but well done, of course, to Will and E to hold on against an F1 driver. What a race that was, Andy. Yeah, it was a cracking race. Uh, hats off to Will and he, he really did uh, surprise us there. I, I think it's fair to say Lando looks pretty pleased, doesn't he? He's happy to be through to the next round. I'm sure there'll be a few beads of sweat there because he had to wipe them from his brow because he very, very nearly lost out with one of the biggest shocks so far. But no, he survives. Good move into Ascari and he's through into the semi-finals, uh, Hayden. He is, and uh, looking to make them themselves, themselves into the uh, semi-final is Esteban Gutierrez and Stoffel Van Dorn, both in the Mercedes team. Esteban Gutierrez, a Mercedes F1 test driver. Van Dorn is also a test driver for the F1 team, but he is also uh, a Formula E driver for the Mercedes-Benz EQ team. Both these guys will be looking to take the win, Andy. Who's your money on quick? Oh, too hard. This one is definitely too tough to call. I'm going to have to wait and see. Let's go then. Let's find out who can come out on top. Gutierrez versus Van Dorn, both from the Mercedes. And away we go. It's Gutierrez leading the Mexican the Mexican driver as they go down towards turn one. Stoffel Van Dorn tucks himself right into the slipstream. Is he going to go for a move into that first corner? No, he's not. Gutierrez locks up but reaches the apex. This is going to be so, so close. I feel this one's going to go right to the line. Here we go then, on board with Stoffel van Dorn, the Belgian driver in Curva Grande. Gutierrez defends to the inside. Van Dorn's going to have to go the long way round. Thinks better of it. Gutierrez holds his line, and van Dorn will perhaps try and wait for Ascari, perhaps even wait for the Parabolica. 
They flash through the trees here at Monza, flashing through the first Lesmo, down towards the second. Stoffel van Dorn is right in the gearbox of Esteban Gutierrez. He's pushing him along. He's saying, get a move on. And now van Dorn has got a real opportunity as they go underneath the old circuit. Defending to the inside is Gutierrez. Van Dorn's going to try and go right round the outside again. He thinks better of it. He'll try and cut back on the exit. Almost side by side there, going through Ascari. And now it truly is a drag towards the line. One corner to go. Gutierrez holds firm. He is not getting Van Dorn that inside line. Van Dorn tries once, tries twice, gives him a little nudge. And they're going to be racing right to the flag. They touch wheels. <laughs> And I think Gutierrez is off. He's in a big moment. Huge spin. And into the gravel trap he goes. And Stoffel van Dorn crosses the line to win in a breathless race. But will that one go to the Stewart's Hayden? Well, if you can't send it, Andy, rear end it. It looks like Stoffel van Dorn did just that here today. Little love tap there to Esteban Gutierrez. But what will the Stewards decide? That one is definitely going to be looked at by the stewards so we will wait confirmation on the winner between the two of those but for now Stoffel van Dorn has got the race victory but it was a fantastic race between the two of them Stoffel van Dorn being patient waiting to make his move and possibly watching from earlier on seeing Arava yeah. uh, getting a little bit too close as uh, we've got another tweet coming in this is from nothing to put here these are getting damn close hashtag Veloce versus they are getting very close indeed and of course if you guys want to get in touch don't forget to tweet us using the hashtag Veloce versus Andy what's your call on that one uh, we're hearing that we, Stoffel van yep. Dorn has been disqualified and Esteban Gutierrez goes through and I think that's fair enough I think uh, you know, Stoffel tried that a little bit too hard again a desperate maneuver and just gave him that little nudge and uh, in the end Gutierrez goes through so Stoffel van Dorn out of that one and that is that then so Stoffel goes is, is, is that, out yeah. Gutierrez through Yep, that is that for the uh, the quarterfinals. As you said earlier, it's do or die with these uh, with these best of ones. So uh, he knew mm -hmm. that he had to get the inside line. He knew that he had to get the inside line to get the job done on Esteban Gutierrez. But it didn't quite work out. Unfortunately for him, he is out and Esteban Gutierrez has progressed to the semifinals. So let's have a look at the brackets for the semifinals. Of course, it is going to be Tiamat Marduk who will take on the Williams F1 driver of Nicholas Latifi. And he... Will be, well, on the other side of the bracket, we've got Lando Norris, who will be going up against Esteban Gutierrez. And then those, the winners of those will be looking to go up against each other in the final. I don't know why that was so difficult to get out. But up next, Andy, is going to be Suzuka. Talk to us about that. Yeah, an ab another legendary racetrack. The only figure of eight racetrack in the Formula One calendar. We've got uh, the incredible SE section at the start of the lap. The driver's going to have to follow close through there. Making a move is going to be tough. Then we've got the spoon carve up at turn 13 and 14. And then it's going to be a blast of the line through 130R, flat out, down into the Casio Triangle chicane, and then past the Ferris wheel and up to the line. I think most of the overtaking is either going to be done at the start into turn one or into that final sector. It's so tough to make a move in the SEs, one, because of the dirty air, and two, because the track is just so narrow, and there isn't many breaking points, Hayden. It really is going to be a difficult one to get past, but I think the hot spots are going to be uh, down towards Casio Triangle at the end of the lap after we go through 130R. Our first matchup, though, is going to be the F1 YouTube content creator of TMM Marduk. Just to remind you who he is, in case you are just joining us at the moment, as there he is getting ready in his Veloce gear. Very, very good-looking shirt. Uh, that he has got on at the moment, the Veloce content creator. Uh, he will be going up against Nicholas de Tifi. Uh, and if you don't know who he is, then that is a bit surprising as well. But he is a Williams F1 racing driver looking to make his debut this season as they are away. We've got Team Ed Marduk in the silver Mercedes with Nicholas de Tifi in the white and blue Williams. As it looks like Team Ed Marduk has got the job Ooh. done. The Tifi goes well. There's a drift as well from Team Ed Marduk. They both had a bit of a spin but it looks like they've got back underway with it. Of course, remember, this is a best of three, guys. So if they lose out in the first race, they have got a chance to get the race win and take victory and move on to the final in the remaining two races. But it is going to put a lot of pressure on the second race. Nicholas Latifi currently trying to hunt down the YouTube content creator of Team at Marju. He, this guy plays this game daily. Um, for his content. So he has a lot of experience, but Nicholas Satifi has a huge amount of experience of driving these cars in real life. Of course, he was test driver before he got that full seat in the Williams. Nicholas Satifi not too far behind, only eight tenths behind Team M. Marduk, seven tenths now, only in that gap on the YouTube content creator. Remember, the, the, the chance for him is going to be 
on the run through 130R and then down into the Castro Triangle. If the MF Lodu can't break the system, very powerful down this place. So here you can see the TV following the MF Lodu on the run down into the 130R. He is nearly got in, but it wouldn't be enough to go for an overstay. Here goes the TV through the flat down corner of 130R. He's going to dive it now down into the Castro Triangle. Yeah, I'm really impressed there with uh, Latifi, despite losing, I thought he did really well to keep in touch and claw the gap back in, but TMM Marduk comes out on top, it was all decided at the first corner, Latifi gave him that little nudge, and I'm pretty sure when Latifi was watching, he'd have been hoping and praying that TMM Marduk went for a spin, he did, but just not as much of a slide and spin as Latifi did, but, you know, fair play to Latifi, he fought back well, and, you know, this one ain't over, best of three, as you said, Hayden, and I think... This one could go right to the end. I think Latifi fancies his chances to win that second race. I think it really could. We're going to have to wait and see for what happens between those two because we're going to go straight into the next semi-final. We've got Lando Norris versus Esteban Gutierrez. This is going to be an exciting one. Lando Norris, of course, F1 driver currently for McLaren. Esteban Gutierrez, ex-Formula 1 driver, of course, 59 race starts in Formula 1. And he is also the Mercedes F1 test driver. So this one is going to be tasty. Andy, what do you think? Um, I'm going to go with... Uh... I don't know. I don't know. You're, you're putting me in the spot, Hayden. I really don't know. Um, I really don't know. Lando. Let's go, Lando. We'll go for Lando. Um, you know, he, he, he was lucky to get through against Will and E. Um, I'm really looking to see how this one goes. Hayden, I'm going to put you in the spot. Who do you think is going to win it? Um, I think this is going to be Lando. I think Lando has shown that he is quicker uh, in not the Oz GP and not the Bar GP. But who knows? Esteban could have been putting the practice in over yeah. the last couple of weeks. He could have gained massively on Lando Norris. There he is on the right-hand side of your screens with yeah. his new new luscious haircut. Look at that. The trim right down to the grain there as he's getting ready for this race up against Esteban Gutierrez. This is going to be a close one. This is going to be semi-final number two. Of course, the first round, it is a best of three. So if you don't get the job done, if you don't get the job done, then uh, you do have another chance in the second race. I've just been told some information that there are a little bit of technical issues between uh, for Esteban Gutierrez of getting into the session. So in fact, forget what I've just said. We're going to go back to semi-final one and we're going to watch Team Ed Marduk versus Nicholas Latifi once more. And you say this one is going to go right down to the wire. So Nicholas Latifi probably will be starting on pole uh, in this one because he did lose out on the next one. So it's only fair that he does get given that pole position. This is going to be an interesting one, Andy. It's going to be very, very interesting. That run to the first corner is going to be so, so crucial. But as we've already seen, I know Latifi was a long way back after that first corner, but I think if it's if it's close, three or four tenths or something like that, going in through Spoon, I think there's every opportunity that somebody could come back in that final sector and make a move. I'm really excited for this one. As I've said, this one, for me, is going to go to the wire. So, uh, yeah, I fancy Latifi here. Um, it's going to be really close. Uh, to get to the final but here we go then big opportunity and it looks like it's actually Ben that is going to be on pole position as the five red lights go out and we are racing here in Suzuka look at the burnout from Ben as he moves off the grid aggressively covering Latifi into that first corner Latifi has a little look oh couldn't quite find a way through as they make their way through and now on into the SE section so Latifi he knows this is a very difficult area of the racetrack to overtake almost impossible when drivers are so closely matched so it's all about just setting it up keep, keeping himself within range of Tiamat Marduk he's expected to lose time for this section due to the dirty air from the car in front so Latifi then just holding firm and then when we get onto the straighter areas of the racetrack he should begin to gain with that slipstream look how much commitment Latifi had there into the second deck now he really is pressuring Ben here as they make their way now into the hairpin where we saw Kamui Kobayashi make a name for himself with so many do or die moves we've not seen any yet in Veloci versus at this 
part of the track, but here we go then, swooping down the hill. This is where Latifi will start to reel Ben in, tucked right up behind that Ferrari, and it is around four tenths, so we are going to see a run to the flag as they make their way through Spoon, and Ben is out of shape, and Latifi is reeling him in. Latifi knows he has to get this place if he wants to take this to a final race. Ben can sense the danger. He's moving left, he's moving right, as they make their way into 130R. Nicholas Latifi simply has to go for the move. Ben parks his car in the middle of the road, then to the right, Breaks late, breaks too late, goes really wide, and Latifi should surely swoop in, and he does! Going into the final corner, Latifi, the Canadian, the Formula One driver, gets one over on the content creator. <laughs> The pressure was on Ben, oh. and the pressure told, and Latifi done it. Brilliant job there, Hayden. What a battle between those two. Oh my god, that was amazing. Nicholas Latifi, what a move into the Casio Triangle. He kept his patience. He could have easily tried to go round the long way. He put Ben under pressure, and Ben bottled it. Ben bottled under the pressure. Nicholas Latifi came back at him, got the job done through the Casio Triangle. Look at him, not looking happy with himself. He knows now that we go down to the final one. It is going to be a battle between these two up next to see who gets through to the final. And it's all to play for. I don't really know who to choose between these two. Look at Ben, not looking happy with himself at all going through there. There's a big smile on his face, though, laughing it off. Uh, as he always does. He can always put a, a smile on his face. But uh, we want to know what you guys think about the Nicholas and TP team at Marduk battle. Don't forget to get in contact with us using the hashtag Veloce versus Andy, what do you think about this battle so far? Oh, it's fantastic. Oh, it really is great to see. It's great to see content creators going up against actual Formula 1 drivers. You know, Ben races against these top guys so often in his career mode, and now we're actually seeing it. And it's great to see. And it's producing great racing. That's the best thing about it. And, you know, I said it would go to a final, and I'm so glad it has, because we get to watch it again for a third time. Give me more. Can we do best of five, please? <laughs> please, can we do best of five? It's brilliant. <laughs> I'm absolutely loving it. And, uh, yeah, Latifi using his experience in racing there. Just wait for the moment, put the pressure on, and Ben crumbled at the Casio Triangle and through he went. Would you say that was the best race yet, Hayden? It's certainly been a cracker. It has been a cracker indeed. This is going to be very close between the two of these as we are about to get underway between the final battle between Team at Marduk and Nicholas Latifi. Remember, Team at Marduk is a YouTube content creator on the F1 2019 game. Uh, 400 YouTube subscribers to his name. Nicholas Latifi, F1 driver for Williams. So, it's all to play for between these two. Ben would love to get the victory up against an F1 driver and then potentially see himself up against another F current F1 driver uh, in the final. But here we go. The light's coming on. It is Team M. Marduk once again in pole position, this time opting for the silver Mercedes instead of the Ferrari. And it looks like he's got a better start again, cutting across Latifi on the run down in towards turn one. Now the lead Latifi is going to have to settle behind Team at Marduk as they go through the rest of the circuit. There's not really that many opportunities for an overtake, but if Ben does make a mistake, then he will surely capitalize on that and try to get past it. It's very nice between the two of these through the S's section. Now through the very long Dunlop curves, they head down towards Degna 1 and Degna 2. Team at Marduk still holding the lead at the moment. Five tenths of a second is the gap between the two of these. The TP again with the same amount of commitment that he had previously through Degna 2 as now we go in towards the hairpin. Will Latifi die for a move? It would be a very uh, opportunistic move if he did do so. It looks like he was quicker through the hairpin there than at Team at Marduk. The gap has certainly come down to five tenths of a second once more. But this is where, like you said earlier, Andy, Latifi will be hunting down at Team at Marduk through the spoon curve as they go through the first part and then the second part. A good exit from both of those. No, it's not. I cursed him. Latifi is round, and that looks like it's going to be certain victory for Team at Marduk. Unless, unless Ben makes a mistake through the last couple of corners. It can be very tricky through the Cassio Triangle, and then you have a bump to deal with on the exit of this corner. So if Ben makes a mistake, if he doesn't realise that the bump's there and just loses the back end, he can crash, and he hasn't. No, he hasn't crashed. He's come across the line, and it is a race win for Team at Marduk, who puts himself into the final. Congratulations, Team at Marduk. You are the first man into the final. And uh, it was good racing, unfortunately, up until the point that Latifi crashed. Do you think that he could have got him? Oh, it's hard to, it's really hard to say. It's really hard to say. Um, I think we're about to load straight back into this one. So I think we'll maybe uh, analyze that in a few moments time. But yeah, uh, I think it was a bit of an anticlimax, Hayden. Uh, I was hoping to get it right to the line. I feel, I feel if Ben had just was able to keep it on the island on the second occasion and learn from his mistake, I think he would have held on. 
Yes, he definitely would. Here we go, though. A battle between Lando Norris and Esteban Gutierrez. We have, we have Gutierrez in the silver Mercedes. Lando is in the bright orange McLaren. And once again, like we saw with Tiamat Mardu, Gutierrez holding the inside line. Lando not really that aggressive as he gets caught up behind Esteban Gutierrez. They're very close between the two of them. But Lando Norris will have to be patient now. We'll have to bide his time and wait to go for a move. Oh, oh no, Lando is off the track. He's onto the grass, into the gravel. And now that is going to be a huge gap between the two of them, Andy. Yeah, big, big gap now between them. And I think Lando's just got to try and apply as much pressure as he can. Just try and lower the gap. He's got nothing to lose now. This first leg is surely going to go the way of Esteban Gutierrez unless he makes a mistake. So Gutierrez will be thinking, be cautious. Keep it on the island. Go slow. It's in the bag. Lando opposite. Got to go and fling everything at it. And who knows, it might apply some pressure. Already the gap coming down to 1.8 seconds. 1.3 seconds. And this is just the mindset that the drivers have got to have. It's contrasting. Gutierrez has got everything, everything to lose. Lando's just got to go hell for leather, and he is. But surely 1.4 seconds is too much to overhaul unless Gutierrez makes a real mistake. And look at that. There we go. That's just how much Lando Norris is throwing uh, that into Spoon Carve. He has to do it, and he makes the mistake. That's a bit similar, Hayden, to what we saw in the last 16, the very first round when everyone was uh, trying their best in the one race format and uh, that's the kind of thing you see when you're going desperate to try and get back into it but it's not going to be Esteban Gutierrez rounds the Casio Triangle and he should take the first leg victory in a best of three shootout against Lando Norris up to the line he comes and he is through or he's not through he takes the first win so I wonder how Ben's feeling sitting there as Esteban Gutierrez takes the win what do you think do you think he's got a preference on who he races against in the next round uh, Hayden? I think he's definitely got a preference there. I mean, he'd definitely like to come up against Lando Norris being a current F1 driver. But Gutierrez is also an ex-racing driver. So, you know, he's probably, knowing Ben, he's probably thinking about the title for his next YouTube video, I went up against Formula <laughs> 1 driver. But he'll always try and wing it some way to get that clickbait title in. Esteban Gutierrez, though, uh, getting the job done on Lando Norris. My money was on Lando, and it looks like Gutierrez has uh, made a great start ahead of Lando. Uh, we've got a tweet coming in. This is from Daniel. We need hashtag LandoBot to win this versus hashtag Veloce versus. We all do love a bit of LandoBot. Maybe he just needs to pause this game. Someone puts up the AI difficulty on full and let's see LandoBot uh, tackle this track up against Esteban Gutierrez. Don't forget, you guys at home can get involved as well by using the hashtag Veloce versus on Twitter. We want to know what you guys think. And uh, then we've got another one coming. This is from Electrically Fast. No, Lando Norris. We have a Lando Norris fan disappointed. Uh, with that result. But don't worry, there's two more races potentially still to come. If Lando can win this next one, we go into an all or nothing finale between the two of them. There's Lando on the right hand side of your screen, just getting ready for the next session. He doesn't look too disappointed with himself, probably just thinking about the next race, isn't he, Andy? Yeah, I think he'll be. He'll, he'll probably have seen Latifi. He managed to claw back uh, to one each. So there's every possibility it could go to decide. Orlando Norris now has to go for it, has to ensure that he wins this race. So yeah, I'm really looking forward to see how this one pans out. Norris versus Gutierrez. 1-0 Gutierrez as things stand. So uh, can Lando get himself back on level terms and force a decider? And uh, as we've already seen with Ben and uh, Latifi, it was absolutely great action between those two, especially in that second race when it was so important to force the decider. <laughs> Hopefully we'll see more of that again. And uh, uh, I'm really excited to see how it pans out. So three, three drivers left at the minute, Hayden. Can you pick a winner now? Are uh, we confident about saying who Ooh. we think the favourite is? <laughs> now you're putting me on the spot because of what I've done yeah. to you earlier. Uh, <laughs> ben is looking really quick out there. Team at Marduk is looking really, really quick out there at the moment. But Lando Norris, F1 driver, you know, you and plays a lot of sim racing in his spare time. And Esteban Gutierrez is also quick. I don't want to pick one, but if I'm going to have to, do you know what? I'm going to be rooting for Ben. He is a good mate of mine. Uh, and of course, we want to do it for the YouTube well. Come on, Ben, you can do it up against these F1 racing drivers. Show them what you are made of. Andy, coming back to you. Let's put you on the spot now. Yeah, I think Ben's going to do it. I do. I think Ben will win overall. We've already seen Lando and Ben come very, very close together on the track and the, mm -hmm. not the Oz GP, didn't we? And I think Lando got a little bit flustered with that one. So I'd love to see yeah. how... Uh, if, I'd love to see that reunited. I think that would be a, a great final. But of course, Lando's got to come back into it. He's got to get back on level terms with Esteban Gutierrez. So, uh, yeah, uh, I, at the minute, I'm saying yeah. Ben, I think he's he's impressed so far through the tournament. He's uh, He's been the quickest, I'd say. He's been the most uh, convincing, I think that's fair to say, of all the drivers so far.
But it's not just about us, guys. It's also about you guys at home. So don't forget to use the hashtag Veloce Versus. Get in touch. Who are you rooting for in this competition? And if you are enjoying the show at the moment, don't forget to check out the Veloce Esports YouTube channel because there is a whole load of racing content over on there. So if you want more racing content, you like the sort of stuff that you're seeing at the moment, don't forget to go watch that. Andy, here we go. Yep, here we go then. This is crucial. Massive, massive race. This one, Lando Norris versus Esteban Gutierrez. Lando moves away in the lead. I'm getting a little bit of lag. I'm not sure if you've got that as well, Hayden, as Lando Norris leads them down into the first corner. And it's Lando leading from Esteban Gutierrez in seven tenths of a second. The difference between them. It's a bit confusing because uh, Lando's actually the one in the Mercedes and it's Esteban that's in <laughs> the McLaren. So I don't know if they're trying to... Uh, confuses, but it is Lando leading the way by eight tenths of a second as they climb the hill. And as I mentioned in the Latifi versus Ben battle for Esteban, it's all about staying within range. It's the second part of the lap where he'll reel Lando in, where it's all straight. Thirty year here, he will struggle, and already Lando building that gap up to 1.1 seconds, and at the minute looking to be in a commanding position. But things can change very, very quickly as they make their way through the hairpin, midway through the lap, and now through this long swooping right-hander which takes you down towards spoon car 1.2 seconds between lando and esteban it's a tall order from esteban lando just has to keep it tidy and as i say Ooh. that he's a little bit wide but he's just about keeping things all under control esteban not really closing in and it looks like we are going to go to a decider and that's what we love to see to see who will meet benjamin daly in the final but lando has still got the final sector to negotiate flying through one thing he goes and up towards the final chicken the casio triangle lando norris makes his way through there untroubled just the final corner to go and we are going oh with a little bit of slide over that bump you mentioned <laughs> earlier Hayden, across the line and he levels it up at one point each we've got one more to go Lando versus Gutierrez. This is going to be very good, Hayden. I'm looking forward to it. This is going to get exciting indeed. Lando versus Esteban Gutierrez. All to play for in this final race. You know, it is all to play for. You lose this, you're out. You are not into the final. And it's going to be a difficult one for both of them because it's all about really getting in towards turn one first. Even though there is that opportunity to go for the overtake, the dirty air through the rest of the track has sort of shown us that it is going to be difficult as we're going to have a look at the bracket now to show the route to the final. There is Tiamat Marduk. His name is already secured in the final, but who will be joining him? Lando Norris or Esteban Gutierrez. The final course will be taking place in Spa-Francorchamps, in the beautiful um, Ardennes Forest uh, in Belgium. So that is going to be an interesting one indeed. But let's not get ahead of ourselves. We still need to focus on Lando Norris versus Esteban Gutierrez. Hopefully this time they're going to be in their right cars. That's going to be a PR nightmare for the real F1 teams. <laughs> Just to let you know that uh, the drivers choose their cars themselves. We did not do that, okay? So that was them. That's all down to them. But Lando Norris hopefully will be back in the orange McLaren so we don't confuse you guys at home. And uh, Esteban Gutierrez in the Mercedes. Do or die, who is going to come out on top? We've got another tweet this time from Lou Yeager. Um, why do that, Lando Norris? Why confuse us? So a lot of people uh, laughing at the situation of the two <laughs> drivers in each other's cars. A very confusing situation. I believe they're all in a Discord together, so they are all talking amongst themselves. Uh, Blockchain versus Lando, absolute traitor to the McLaren crew. <laughs> Uh, that's from 40 Servant. So thank you guys for getting in touch. Don't forget, if you want to get in touch, tweet us at hashtag Veloce versus. We want to know what you guys think. Oh, Andy, one race to go before the final. Are you ready? Yeah, I'm ready. And I think Lando <laughs> showed his pace there. I think, I, think, I think that could be decisive. I think if he gets his nose in front, I think he's going to be very difficult to overcome. As a neutral... And everyone watching, I think it would be best if Gutierrez is leading this into the first corner and really makes Lando have to work for this because it looked to me like Lando had the pace advantage. And uh, yeah, if Esteban can get into that first corner first, it is going to make for some real edge of seat stuff. Buckle the seat belts up, grab the popcorn, folks. This should be a thrilling finale to see who will meet Benjamin Daly in the final. He's already on a flight over to Belgium and Spa. I'm sure he's probably <laughs> practicing. He's probably sitting practicing right now, knowing Ben. <laughs> Yeah, no, Ben, he is definitely practicing at the moment or writing up, you know, coming up with ideas for his new title for his next video. <laughs> How can I best clickbait 
this video coming up. I mean, you just put these drivers' faces in and you've surely got to do a good job. But Lando versus Esteban Gutierrez, like you say, it did look like Lando did have the pace over Gutierrez. So it will be interesting for Lando to be behind Gutierrez. And we've seen that Lando does go for those do or die overtakes, as we saw earlier on Sasha Fenestras. Yeah, and uh, I think we might see an exact repeat. We might have deja vu if Gutierrez does indeed lead uh, for the first portion of the lap. Obviously, we don't know what will happen, but if he does, and Lando has to go for the move, as you say, Hayden, we've already got previous with Lando. He's went for it uh, at Yunsau in Brazil, and he'll go for it at the Casio Triangle if he sees a gap, because uh, he's got to. Otherwise, he won't be in the final. But uh, I'm sure Lando will be thinking, right, let's get this move into turn one on Esteban. And... Uh, Maybe not make it too dramatic. But we can't write off Esteban <laughs> yet at all. We cannot because uh, he has already taken a leg off uh, Lando and in the, in the, is one each. So, uh, and Esteban, of course, had that great fight as well with Stoffel. We saw that one as well. That was fantastic in Monza. So, uh, you know, I'm looking forward to it. Should be plenty of wheel-to-wheel action. Should be close. And I can't wait to see who joins Ben in the final in Belgium. Just touching upon your point about the battle in uh, in Monza, it just went to show that Esteban does know how to defend. He really defended that inside line down in towards the Parabolica, the final corner around the Italian Grand Prix circuit. So he does know how to defend. So if Lando is behind and he does go for that do or die move, Esteban Gutierrez is going to make it very difficult for him as he is always going to close that line. Sorry, Hayden, could you repeat that? You kind of jumped on me there. Oh, sorry. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. I, I, sorry. Esteban Gutierrez defending against Stoffel van Dorn in the uh, Italian race, holding the inside line, you know, touching upon your point that you made earlier, yeah. showing that he is good at defending. He knows what to do. And if Lando does yeah. want to go for that move, he's going to have to be creative to get past Gutierrez because yeah. he is going to hold the inside line. Yeah, you're absolutely right. Yeah, as you were saying. I'm sorry, I just, it was just briefly, uh, you cut out on me. Yeah, Esteban, you know, he, he defends the inside so well, as you say. And Lando, he won't get the space that he got with Sh Sasha, with Esteban. No chance. So, as you say, creative. Uh, maybe he has to do something like we saw from Sasha on Lando through turn five and six. So, uh, yep. you know, something wild, <laughs> maybe into the Degners, maybe into the, uh, the hairpin where uh, Kobayashi once did it. So, we'll have to wait and see. Potentially, yeah. it's all about surprising the driver you're going up against, isn't it? As it looks like we should be getting underway. I'm hearing that Esteban Gutierrez is in the session. So hopefully this time they've selected the right cars and we will be getting going for the last semi-final before we head over to Belgium for the final between one of these two drivers and the YouTube content creator of Tia Met Marduk. It's going to be very, very exciting indeed. Of course, Lando Norris, a current Formula One driver going against ex-Formula One driver. These guys never actually raced against each other in Formula One out on track. Esteban Gutierrez no longer on the current grid, but, you know, has maybe more experience than Lando Norris. He ra he's raced more races than Lando has so far in Formula One. So this could be an interesting battle between the two of them. It shouldn't be too long now before we get going. I'm going to put you under pressure once again, Andy. Quickly, go. Who's going to win it? Lando. 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 I th I th I yeah, I've got to say, I think if I think he's going to go for it. I think he, as we saw with him against Sasha, he went for the desperate move. He got it done, and I think he is going to get uh, get it get it done here. I think it's going to be key though who gets into that first corner first. That is so so crucial because as we said already, Esteban defends like mad. He defends that inside. He won't allow Lando down the inside. He's going to have to be creative. But I just feel like Lando. I think he's got a real competitiveness about him in this this race, and I think he's going to. Be inventive and pull something out of the bag should he be behind. Yes, I, I, I'm going to have to agree with you on that one. Lando Norris is probably my favourite for this battle, but I don't want to count off Esteban Gutierrez. He will surprise us in this race. You know, he is probably going to be right on the back of Lando. If Lando does get the job done in towards turn one, if Esteban gets the job done in towards turn one, he's going to defend like hell. You know, it is all to play for. Everything is on the line, no matter which position you are in as um, we're getting told that Gutierrez is getting some internet issues, so uh, he hopefully will be um, connecting soon. So this gives us, I suppose, an opportunity to talk about what we have seen so far. So, so far, yeah. I want to know your highlight race, which one has been your favourite so far, and I also want to know what has been your favourite mood so far. Well, my, my personal highlight has been the battle. Well, there's been so many, and I think, I think Latifi <laughs> against Ben... Uh, in the other semi-final in that second race that got it to one each. I think that was great. I think it really was. You could really... Okay, they weren't actually side by side for too long just at the end of the lap, but I think we really got in the heads mentally of the drivers, of how Ben was cracking under the pressure that... Um, 
Latifi was putting on him. I think that was great. The best move for me, still, that cracker of a move from Sasha around the outside. I, I thought it was fantastic. I've commented on a few of those moves there before, and every time I see it, I think it's brilliant. <laughs> so, yeah, um, that's probably been my highlight in terms of overtake and my uh, highlight in terms of a battle overall, definitely that second race. And as a whole, I enjoyed that battle and also enjoyed Esteban against as a, a big, uh, sorry, sorry to cut you off there i've been told that we are going to be going into the final semi-final now it sounds like uh they have been loaded into the session hopefully this time as i've said before these two are in the right cars to make it easier for not only us but also you guys the viewers at home to tell oh no they're both in mercedes cars okay this is going to be difficult once again but lando looks to be starting in pole position just look out for his yellow helmet as it looks like gutierrez has got off to a fantastic Start, but Lando holds it down in towards turn one. Will Gutierrez go around the outside into the first? Well, he's going to have to try it. As uh, we come to the screen, but we're back on board with Esteban Gutierrez. He goes around the outside potentially on Lando Norris. These two guys so close to each other. Gutierrez doing what other drivers have failed to do, sticking it behind through the S's section. The dirt air now only really starting to affect him as they go through the Dunlop curve. Gutierrez with maybe a better line through there than Lando Norris. It's still so close. Nothing to separate these two drivers as Lando Norris holds it through Degna 1. Through Degna 2 they go and again holding the position. Will Gutierrez go for a do or dive move in towards the hairpin. He holds back for the time being. He's probably going to wait down in through the exit of Spoon Curve as the back end Ooh. comes out on Lando Norris there. A little bit of fishtailing from the McLaren driver currently in that silver Mercedes. Esteban Gutierrez right behind Lando Norris. He's going to have a look around the outside into the Spoon Curve. Lando Norris defends. Now this is going to be the vital part of the circuit. He's going to get the slipstream pumped right up behind Lando Norris all the way down to 130R, through 130R, and then down into the Casio Triangle. Will he go for a move through this very fast corner? Lando holding the inside line for the time being. Gutierrez is going to have to go around the outside through the Casio. There's contact between the two of them. Gutierrez right to switch back, trying to get the inside line there. It looks like Gutierrez is going to cross the line ahead of Lando Norris on the track, but I think it's going to be a slam dunk penalty there. But Esteban Gutierrez, in this case, is most likely going to go to Lando Norris. He's probably going to take a great victory here, as the stewards will definitely be looking at, uh, into that. But I think Lando Norris is going to take it, Andy. But it's just been confirmed there. Lando Norris will take the race win there, Esteban Gutierrez. Unfortunately, you know, like we said, it's do or die in these 1v1 yeah. head to heads. You've got to go for the moves. He went for it, it didn't quite work out, and Lando Norris takes the victory. Yeah, well, it actually played out the exact opposite of what we were expecting, didn't it? We thought it would be Lando, the one behind, perhaps, maybe uh, lining up for the attack. But no, it was Gutierrez behind. And of course, as you say, Hayden, you've got nothing to lose. You've got to go for it. If you make it work, you're a hero. If you don't, you're zero. And in the end, Esteban didn't work out. And uh, Lando Norris goes through to the next round. But another really good battle. And perhaps the reason Lando jumped in the Mercedes is maybe the game thinks the quicker the car in real life, the higher we put them on the grid. So maybe that's what he was thinking. I don't know if that's true or not, or whether that works into the game or not, but that could be what he was thinking. Look at you being all smart in as my uh, co-commentator. That is a good point. If they've got it on the realistic um, grid uh, formation, because it, it could either be random, it could be custom, or it could be realistic. If it's unrealistic, you're in, you're in the Mercedes, you will be starting uh, from pole position. So uh, maybe, you know, Lando Norris, you know, with this uh, shaving his head, it's, you know, added a few... Uh, IQ points to himself and he has been able to, uh, to, to go up against Esteban Gutierrez there. So we're going to have a look at the bracket of just how our two finalists have made their way through. So Tiamat Marduk, he came up against Schumacher first. It was a great battle between the two of those, but Ben just mount about managed to get the job done. Then he went up against Archie Hamilton and that was a quite an easy victory there for uh, Tiamat Marduk. Then he progressed and went up against Nicholas Latifi, who is, of course, F1 driver for Williams. That was a close battle between the two of them, but he just about got the victory over Latifi. Lando Norris also had a difficult time on his progress to the final. Went up against Fenestras first, very close between those two drivers. That got him up against Will and E, who, to be fair to him, surprised us and actually gave Lando Norris a bit of a battle. And of course, we've just seen Norris versus Esteban Gutierrez, which was a great show. And that is how Norris has gone to the final. Andy, talk to us about Belgium. 
Well, this one is my favourite on the whole calendar. It really is a classic, the longest circuit on the Formula One calendar. So much elevation change. La Source, exciting. Up through Eau Rouge, exciting. Up to Le Com as well. So much exciting places to make an overtaking manoeuvre. And I've not even mentioned Pujon. I've not even mentioned uh, Blanchimon as well. So many challenging areas of the track. So many opportunities to overtake as well. They really are. We should be getting into the next, into the final very, very shortly. Of course, this is what we've all been waiting for. TMF Marduk versus Lando Norris. TMF Marduk, uh, F1 2019 content creator on YouTube. 400,000 YouTube subscribers. He will be taking on Lando Norris. As they're both in the McLarens now as the five lights come on here in Belgium. And we go racing as it looks like Dimit Marduk starts from a pole position. He is ahead of Lando Norris as they run down in towards the source. He's got the job done. The Lando Norris switches back and then Ben runs wide and that gives position to Lando Norris. But is that tactic from Dimit Marduk? He's going to get the victory. He's going to get the run all the way down in towards the comp and he could potentially get the opening back on Lando Norris. Look at the switch dude. Look at how much that is overpowered to get the car ahead. And it looks like Dimit Marduk is going to make it easy meal of Lando Norris to go down in towards the comp. And Lando on the inside, no, he decides against it. Ben locks up their team and Mardu just locks up a little bit in that orange McLaren. They're both in orange McLaren. And now Lando looks up the inside in towards Rivage. Can he get the job done? Yes, he can. Ben going for the switchback for Duva. Then can he put it off? No, he can't. They go into the corner with no name. Lando Norris ahead of TMF Marduk for the time being, but they run down into a field. It's going to be side by side oh, between oh, the two of them. This is such a fast corner. Lando Norris with the switch back on the power. Now, wheel to wheel again between the two of these. What a final we have got ahead of us. And it's only the first of these best of three battles. Wheel to wheel everywhere out on track. Benjamin Daly trying to hold it round the outside of Lando Norris as they come down in towards Stavolo now. Benjamin Daly still holding on that inside line. There's contact between the two of them. Lando on the outside. Oh. He's hit the barrier. And it looks like it's all over for Lando Norris in race one. Unfortunately, TMF Mardu is going to probably take the race victory. But he has still got a couple of corners. They're still with down into the bus stop chicane. Can be very easy to lose the back end on the braking into this corner, but it looks like Timmy Marduk has got it all sorted. As it looks like he's gonna <laughs> come into the pit, show posting once again from Timmy Marduk. Will Lando Norris though is he up and running? I don't think so. I think Timmy Marduk is gonna take the race with Lando <laughs> Norris. Just <laughs> try and get in front there, come on the show for us. But uh, Lando Norris uh, disqualified from the session because of that. And it is race one victory to Tia Met Mardu. Andy, what a battle to start us off with. Oh my God. Well, the first half of that was thrilling. The second half, mediocre pit lane disqualifications. But uh, wow, that was absolutely thrilling for the start of it. I mean, what racing, even right up through the Fania chicane. You know, we had it all the way down to Pujon and then carrying on through there. Norris trying around the outside, giving the inside for the next part of the track. And then Ben at the inside through Stavolo, then through the second part. Norris ran out of road and bang, off into the barrier, game over. And Ben takes the opening race in the final. But that is a perfect preview of what's to come. This is exactly what we wanted to see this format give us. And it is giving us it. We've got content creator going up a current F1 driver. And it is absolutely great to see. I'm loving it. Absolutely loving it. And Ben will be hoping to try and get a clean sweep, win this 2-0. But Lando, you'll be fighting back. We know how strong he is. We know how quick he is. We've seen it just there. And uh, Lando will be hoping to get it back on level terms but great stuff and there's a tweet hayden uh, it's from the f1 rush that overtakes in the first final lando norris first team at marduk hashtag veloce esports hashtag veloce versus they were some great overtakes between the two of them side by side switching back left and right just trying yeah. to get the better of each other so evenly compared but how difficult is that corner where Lando Norris unfortunately lost it. You know, it's very difficult sometimes to even go one by one through there, let alone side by side. Unfortunately, Lando Norris just drifted out a little bit too wide and clipped the barrier. Yeah, for those that don't often play the Formula One games or don't do much, as much racing, that, that second part where Lando went off, it, it really does come at you quickly. The barrier almost sucks you in. So it's so easy to run wide. And that's exactly what happened. As uh, I think we're getting ready to go racing again for the second uh, installment and can Ben win it 2-0 or can Lando get back on level terms and force a decider but the great thing about this circuit if you're behind into the first corner 
you've got the advantage going up the hill. So, uh, and then at the, at the corner where Lando crashed, if you're behind, you've got an advantage in that long run to the bus stop. So this is what's so good about this track. That's why it's so great to have it as a final because there's so many areas where you can try and make a move. And here come the five red lights. We're about to go racing in the second installment in this final. It's Tiamat Marek versus Lando Norris. It's Lando Norris pulling away from Paul, running down towards La Source, and he will lead them through that first corner. But as I said, oh, he's gone a little bit wide and Ben, is it going to go straight through? And I tell you what, that looked deliberate. That looked like a planned move from Lando Norris. He knows that getting into the slipstream is the ideal opportunity. That's what you want to do. I think we've seen in recent years in real life Formula One, people slowing down to get DRS. Obviously, there's no DRS in a one-lap sprint, but it just shows you how powerful the slipstream is in this game. And Ben, at the minute, is holding on. It was almost as if Lando Norris held off that little bit too much uh, going into the first corner, but he will get a second chance coming out of Stavolo. So Ben, not too tidy through there. Lando staying close to the back of him as they make their way through Malmody and down towards this tricky hairpin. Ben locking up but holding on at the minute. If he stays there, he will win the Veloci versus. We won't need a decider, but you and neutrals watching, I'm sure you all want to see it go all the way to the final. I sure do. Has Lando Norris got any tricks up his sleeve as they make their way through Pujol almost flat out through there. Tiamat Marduk, the Aussie, still holding on. He was one of the pre-race favourites, as was Lando Norris. And they've both made their way all the way to the final, through the Fania chicane, and then through the first and second part of Stavolo, and then it is a race up to the bus stop. Lando Norris is exactly where you need to be, right behind him, in the slipstream, and gaining, and gaining, and gaining, as they make their way up towards Blanchimon now. Ben looks to have some serious straight line speed, but Lando is gaining, and gaining, and he's gonna have to go for a move then, into the bus stop chicane, if he wants to keep this series alive for one race longer. Ben defends the inside. Lando tries the outside. He's now gonna have to go down oh. the inside. He's lost it. He spun. And surely that means that is that. And Ben is gonna take the win or is he letting him go? No. He is letting him go. <laughs> and Lando, Lando comes across the line and wins. Yeah, he comes across the line of wins there. Not too sure what has happened to Ben, whether he just uh, lost the back end, you know, a little bit of contact between the two of them, lost the back end or Ben being Ben, maybe he wants to make a good video out of it. You know, he's, he's thinking about his video. He's thinking about, you know, let's let's put it down to the last one. Let's put it all on the line. Do or die race between the two of them. But another interesting race, very different to the first one we saw between the two of them. I think Landon Norris, like you said, just lifted off a little bit too much to try and get the slipstream on at TMF Marduk. But now both of them are going to be playing those mind games uh, out of turn one. It's going to be very interesting to see who comes out on top. There's Ben laughing away. Uh, as he usually does, uh, and he's probably very excited to go up against Lando Norris for the final time in this uh, Veloce, uh, not the GP versus series. Uh, Andy, what did you make of that race? Yeah, brilliant again. It, it, it's, it's tactical. Well, the first race, it was full on, full on for the first half lap. This time, tactical. Lando Norris deciding to hold back through that first corner. Are we going to see them both crawl up through a rouge on this lap? I don't know <laughs> what's going to happen, but uh, exciting to see. But uh, I do believe if you're the car behind coming out of Stavolo, you've got a real chance of making the move. But the car in front, if he defends the inside, you're making it very difficult to go around the outside. And we saw that there. Lando, it was really tough for him. And to be fair, he was a bit desperate. But Ben, I think, as you, as we mentioned, just wants to, you know, make it go all the way. Because, <laughs> because you know, that's what we like to see. Everyone wants to see that. And that's what we're getting. So it's, it's a tough one to weigh up. It really is. Do you want to be behind or not? Because it, as I said, if you cover the inside, it makes it very difficult, Hayden. It does. I think you want to be, I think you want to be behind on the run down towards the Kuhn, but um, yes, going yes. into uh, Stavolo and then Blanchemont and then down towards the bus stop chicane, you really have to get, be late on the brakes to go for that move as the five lights coming on. We are underway for the final time in the Not The GP versus series. It's like Lando Norris has got a much better start there than Benjamin Daly, but we know it's all about the mind games on this run down in towards the kennels, the Kemmel straight and on towards the commas. It looks like uh, Tiamat Madu is going to be following behind Lando Norris. But what has Norris got up his sleeve? Will he tuck back behind Benjamin Daly as they're going side by side now through this right-hander onto the Kemmel straight? And here goes Lando Norris. He's going to tuck back into that slipstream and try and dive it up the inside possibly on the Tiamat Madu in towards the con. Here he goes up the inside. No, he doesn't. Not late up the break. Head the Tiamat Madu who holds the for the time of being cut. Lando will be going out down in towards Ravage. It's all to play for. It's do or die. He needs to get past the MF Mardu if he wants to be crowned the first champion of the Not the GP. 
versus Benjamin Daly, though, team. And Marduk holding on to it, doing a fine job. Two attempts of a second separating these two drivers. Group of one now, team and Marduk still holding on to position, but Lando has caught up massively. Will he go up the inside? Oh. In towards the he has a look. Up the inside goes Lando. He can't quite get the job done. Team at Marduk still holding on fantastically, but this is the most important part of the circuit for Lando. He needs well, well, here we go then. We're going to go side by side down towards the end of the lap, and Tiamat Marduk is going to go defensive to the inside. We're going to go side by side through Blanchimon. This is the perfect finale to the final, and Lando Norris has found the way down the inside. That's what's so important getting that inside lane. He breaks really late. Crowd's been out, and Lando Norris is surely going to win the drag race to the line. He is surely, look at that, it's almost a dead heat. But Lando Norris, by six hundredths of a second, has done it. He's beaten Tiamat Marduk, and he wins the Not The GP Veloci Versus. Fantastic stuff there. Great racing, and that's exactly what we love to see. It went right to the end, and, you know, Lando was close enough this time. He was able to get alongside before the braking zone. Ben didn't get the inside that he wanted. Lando got it, and it proved crucial, Hayden. That was incredible stuff between the two of them. Lando Norris is our victor here today for not the GP versus. Well done to Lando Norris taking the victory, but also well done to Benjamin Daly. Both of them cracking, and as you said, six hundredths of a second separating the two of them as they cross the line. What a fantastic final we have just seen. And, you know, just goes to show that you don't really need 20 drivers out on track. You put them up against each other, 1v1. There's no excuses now. Lando Norris is the quickest out of the lot of them, Lando. Uh, Andy? Landy? Andy Landy. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, absolutely brilliant. I love the format. I think it was a real success. It was great to see 1v1. Uh, it, the pressure's on the drivers. You've got the pressure and you've got just that 1v1, the battle mentally as well as on track respects of it and I think it was, it was great to see and uh, you know Lando came out on top in the end He and, and, and as I said it was so important to get that inside line get into the bus stop and he found a way down the inside crowded Ben out for the second part and he's a worthy winner fantastic and to be fair Ben as well he's, another, he's a worthy winner as well because if he hadn't let Lando through we wouldn't have had that final so hats off to him as well and I think yeah, it was great to see I think they were the, the two deserving finalists and they put on a great show throughout I have to agree with you there. Definitely both deserving finalists. Put on a great show. Good battles throughout all their races, in fact. You know, it wasn't just them easing through and getting to the final and then battling against each other. You know, Ben had his difficulties with David yeah. Schumacher and also Nicholas Latifi. And then Lando mm. also had his own difficulties with Sasha Fenestras, Will and E, and even Esteban Gutierrez. So, you know, they have put on a show all the way through to the final. And it was, you know, it was only going to go one way. Those two going head-to-head -head and battling all the way to the line. Yeah, exactly. And that's what makes it great as well, because, you know, you wouldn't expect the likes of Will and E to go head-to-head -head with a Formula 1 driver and make it so difficult for Lando. But he did, and that, that that's what made it um, brilliant. Because, you know, you look at it on paper and you go, yeah, Lando strolls that. But no, not over one lap. The pressure's on, and Will and E put in a good performance there. And, uh, yeah, both of them had their difficult difficulties, as you say, Hayden, and, they you know, they rose to the top. They came, came through it. And uh, yeah, it was great to see. What was your what was your highlight? Like, what was your personal favourite battle of the month? What was your favourite head to head? Um, do you know what? I really like the one that kicked off the day. David Schumacher up against Tiamat Marduk. It was a good battle to start the day off. You know, we could have just jumped in there. The first rounds could have been, uh, you mm -hmm. know, good drivers versus easy drivers. That just proved us wrong straight away in a great way to start the show. So definitely one of the highlights races. Uh, best move. Possibly that one. You know, it was all to play for for Lando Norris. He had to get it done if he wanted to be crowned the winner. And he went up the inside into the bus stop chicane. He put, he slammed the door on Tiamat Marduk through the second part. And he got definitely a worthy winner at the end of the day. We might be having some interviews with our uh, our winners. But don't forget, the guys, if you want to get in touch with us as well, hashtag Veloce versus on the Twitter. And uh, we will read out some of your tweets. Andy, driver of the day. Oh, driver of the day. Now, now, I wasn't expecting driver of the day because uh, it's not a race, but but well, let's have a look then. Ben put in a good performance. Lando as well. A few a few names in there. I've got, I think we've got to go with the winner. I think we've got to go with the eventual winner and say Lando Norris. I think 
you look at it on paper and you think Ben would probably be the favourite ahead of Lando because he plays the game a lot. But I think Lando, you know, showed his quality as a racer, as a driver, and really fought really well to get the upper hand and, and go on and win. So I'm going to go for Lando Norris. What about yourself, Aidan? Uh, yeah, I mean, it's a bit, probably maybe a stupid question to show to you, <laughs> the driver of the day, with his person who won. But I suppose the surprise of the bunch out of all of those, for me, has got to be Willany. Um, you know, yeah. went up against went up against Jamie Chadwick and then, uh, you know, put on a show with Lando Norris as well. It sounds like we're going to have some drivers come in for interviews. So uh, just going to be waiting for those guys. It's going to be Tiamat Marduk and Lando Norris, I believe. So I believe you guys are in the call with us at the moment. Whoop, whoop. Yeah, we are. G'day, g'day. What a race between the two of you. Oh, my God. Going head to head for so many corners in that first battle. The second one, uh, you know, maybe not... Uh, as much batting as we saw, but that third one, oh my God, all to play for. Ben, how do you feel about Lando sending out the inside into bus stop and then shutting the door on you? I don't even remember. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So <much> uh, <laughs> what actually happened as well in the, uh, in the second race where there was contact between the two of you going into that final chicane? Um, or do you not uh, remember that either? Um, and then my my car broke. It was anti or something. <laughs> Gearbox issue. <laughs> Gearbox issue, yeah? Oh, the final <laughs> lap as well. Ironic. Yeah, <laughs> it just had to be. <laughs> there was a cracking race between the two of you. <laughs> uh, yeah, cracking yeah, race between, between the two of you. Sorry, I cut oh. across you. You go talk. <laughs> yeah. Um, no, I want to first of all say like congrats to Ben because um, he uh, he was fast and we had a good race, especially race one. I think it was um, when we're side by side for literally the whole lap until um, <clears throat> I'm going to say Ben put me in the wall, but he didn't. <laughs> um, but uh, yeah, it was good and it was close and it was fair and um, Ben was the, the yeah Ben was the, the team player and. Unlucky that the car broke down in race two, obviously, but um, <laughs> it was uh, it was real good fun racing him. So congrats. Cheers, Ben. Ben, um, if it's so yeah, good fun. <laughs> <laughs> well, I think this uh, battle sort of been brewing between the two of you because you know we look back at not the Oz GP. You had your own little battle. Uh, there's clips of you, Lando, when Ben gets past and you're shouting "screw you," and Ben's just trying to get in there, <laughs> and then and then you go into into not the bar GP and you were holding him up in qualifying. Ben, Whoa, no, I wasn't. Don't, don't say that. <laughs> look, I'll tell you the true story of that. Okay. <laughs> um, my engineer told me we're going for another push lap and Ben just happened to be behind me on his out lap and um, I was preparing my lap and uh, just before I started my engineer told me to box so um, Ben started too close behind me you know and uh, I boxed and, it, and yeah he missed out by like two thousandths or something uh, <laughs> nipping me in, in, uh, in qualifying <laughs> Ben anything to say on that? <laughs> Absolute tripe. <laughs> <laughs> All I'm going to oh, say is wait till the next round. I'm waiting for so nice. Uh, so this battle is probably going to continue between the two of you as the series goes on. Um, I'm sure it will. Yeah, Ben. Ben's fast, and um. Especially when you go to the tracks, like I didn't know. Well, I mean, I know all of the tracks, but I haven't driven so much on this game. Um, but Ben seems to be uh, pretty good in all of them. So, yeah, I think when we both put the practice in, um, we're fairly equal. And then uh, then we get races like we had tonight. So it's uh, I'm, I'm looking forward to them. Well, it's been an absolutely fantastic it can, show. Oh. <laughs> it's been an absolutely fantastic show. Thank you both for being a part of it and for such brilliant races at the end there. Congratulations, Lando, on being the race winner. Uh, anything to say as the winner of today? Um, <laughs> no, I, I don't know. I, I no, I need to just say, uh, of course, again, a well done to Ben because, you know, I wouldn't have won it if um, yeah, that apparent uh, engine issue happened. So, <laughs> um, yeah. So if if that didn't happen, he he would have been the fair winner, and uh, yeah, and it would have been different. So um, I'm not going to take all the glory, but uh, yeah, I'm just looking forward to the next one. Thanks to all the viewers for watching, and uh, and of course you guys for setting it all up. 
But thank you very much. We will see you in the next one. Andy, thank you very much for joining me here today. It's been an absolute pleasure to comment alongside you. Yeah, it's been great. I've really enjoyed it. Some great action, great battles throughout, right from the very start. And uh, yeah, I'm looking forward to more because that was a real success and uh, a deserving, deserving winner and deserving finalist. I thought it was fantastic. Thank you also to all of you guys at home for getting in touch using the hashtag Veloce Versus. Don't forget, you can still get in touch. We will still reply to you on Twitter uh, if you guys want to talk to us about that race. But that is going to wrap up the Veloce Versus, not the GP series today. Thank you, everyone, for getting involved. Thank you, everyone, for taking part. It's been a brilliant racing. Remember as well, uh, our thoughts and prayers are with everybody who is suffering through these tough times. You know, due, this is happening due to the postponement of real-life sport thanks to, uh, well because of coronavirus so um that is why this is all going on so our thoughts and prayers are with everybody who's currently suffering through these tough times and also to all the public services and the healthcare workers who are working so hard uh, at the moment and putting in a fantastic job and uh, don't forget we can all play our own part because if you stay home you stay safe it will stop the prevention of the spread thank you andy for joining me thank you everyone for being here and we will see you next time